You know what, man? You want to know the best way to stop cussing out your football team? It's Vice Lombardi, by the way. To stop cussing out your football team and your favorite players like you tired of cussing out Xavier Woods, you tired of cussing out Jalen Smith and, and, and Sean Lee and, and Jeff Heath and all those guys. The best way to take responsibility out of those guys' hands is to leave all the pressure up to level one. If you take care of business on the first level, boy, everybody else's job is easier. In case everybody didn't understand here, because uh, because a lot of us know football a little differently than others. Your D-line is level one. Linebackers is level two. And your DBs are? Yes, very good. They're level three. Good job, y'all. Uh, write that down. That will be on the test. So that's what I'm saying, right? If, if you want to keep all these guys out of compromising positions, I know there's a such thing as, hey, your D-line is to take a block so that your linebackers can run free. Well, shit, they running free than a mother because we don't even need them to run. We well, don't need them to run because you're taking, you're taking care of business with your first level, right? Sean Lee basically walked free to this damn dog pile here because everything else was secured already. Antoine Woods putting, putting, um, putting, putting down a little bit of hurt on this double team here with this left guard and this center. Okay. Now I like the fact that he's being double teamed, but I also like the fact that he's getting penetration against these, these two guys and he beats the double team. I like that. Don't just get blocked for the hell of getting blocked. Like, Cool, get blocked and then don't don't be blocked anymore. You see Doris Armstrong right here at your right defensive end. Um, he's going to cross the face of this left tackle, but he's going to get a real free and easy hit on number 63 right here. You want to know why his time with 63 was so easy? Because, damn, <laughs> damn, Antoine Backwoods is over here tearing shit up. Shouts out to Wild Parsley, right? You need some of that every single week. And Malik Collins is on the backside of this thing. Where he at? Who is this? That's Malik Collins. No, that's, that's Kerry Hyder. Kerry Hyder here tearing stuff up. D-Law coming in, cleaning up the job. You know what I mean? So I think part of the funk, the reason why we're so upset with our linebackers, why we're so upset with our safety play, I say this all the time. Like, hey, we get better better D-line help. The rest of this thing is just going to fall into place. I kind of wish that we would invest in our D-line like we invested in our offensive line. You know, um, you know, I think our highest pick on D-line is D-Law. We traded up to go get him. Uh, Randy He's the, the biggest talent, um, but, you know, he ain't really playing necessarily. So, I mean, the rest of these guys, I mean, Robert Quinn was the first-round pick, but, you know, he's 40. <laughs> he's like 33 or something, 32 or something like that. But he's 40, right? I would love to invest in our D-line across the board so that we can uh, kind of set that anchor for our defense like we have an anchor for our offense, and that's been our identity for a while. But, anyway, let's move on. Here's another example kind of backing that claim up just a little bit. Uh, Antoine Woods and Sean Lee. Let's take a look at those guys as a combo because that's how the Rams offensive line would look at them. They'll look at them as one block, two blocks. And one of these offensive linemen are going to have to come off. So what I'm saying is even if there's a situation where the left guard and the center are bumping Antoine Woods, but one eventually does come off to get Sean Lee, I want Antoine Woods to be good enough to just beat that guy that he's left on. You know what I mean? I want him to be able to beat one on one. I, I don't want anybody to be able to block him one on one. Antoine Woods, that is. Don't don't block him one on one. And if and if and if you're gonna double team Antoine Woods and stay on Antoine Woods, then Sean Lee gets this cool ass angle right here, uh, alleyway to uh to uh Ty Gurley, and then you dead as fried chicken at that point. But um, but if your decision is to come off and block Sean Lee, then cool. We should be taking advantage of the notion that you have your center one on one with Antoine Woods. That's how this thing's supposed to be. You know, offense is more like scheme based and we're supposed to operate on like unity, synchronicity and execution and all that good old stuff. The enzymes collaborate to make a perfect match. But on defense, sometimes it's just really about whooping people. It's about whooping a dude in front of you for the greater good. And uh, I need Antoine Woods to do a lot more of that these next six games I need Antoine was to to uh, whoop a lot more of the dude in front of him if he can make this impact let me take a look at my handy dandy schedule i know he could do it next week i know he can do it the week after that and in terms of the four games after that i mean we'll just kind of see based on the matchups but whatever but even if it's not antoine woods this week like let it be malik collins the next week let it be you know d law and quinn that can't get blocked up front just one d line all d linemen need to be solid up front but one guy needs to make like a super impact to set the back end of the defense level two and level three to set those guys up nicely 
And then look, somebody's gonna be like, "Well, Antoine Woods beating up the left guard because the left guard for the Rams is is trash." Well, cool. Every offensive line is gonna is gonna bound to have a weakness. Then let's take advantage of that team's weakness. Hell, Aaron Donald played all across the D line. But hey, when it's time for the Rams to play the Cowboys, put his ass over Sue Filler. It, it wouldn't make sense to put Aaron Donald over Zach Martin the whole game. Put him, you know, like like let's find the weakness and, and figure that thing out. I think what happened is we realized that the left guard and the center for the Rams kind of soft. So hey. If if Antoine Woods is is going to be there, then let's let Antoine Woods try to make the Pro Bowl in one game the best he can <laughs> by beating up on the left guard and getting in the backfield and making tackles. Don't let nobody tell you that your defense ain't playing with fire. Sometimes we don't execute. Sometimes we don't we don't we don't get off blocks and we look terrible sometimes. But don't let nobody tell you that your defense ain't playing with fire. This is the Sean Lee interception, but this is what I want y'all to look at first, man. I want y'all to look at. Look at Jordan Lewis right here. Look at the defense as a whole. Definitely look at Sean Lee. But I want us to focus on Jordan Lewis right here through this Sean Lee interception. Look at Jordan Lewis right here. Just look at Jordan Lewis. He's going to get up. He's going to get up. Ah, He's going to get a block. He's going to come around. You're going to find Sean Lee. He's going to block somebody else. He 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 going to make this happen. Look at your cowboy defense finding people to put hands on. Look at your cowboy. Don't this make you smile? Don't this make you happy? Don't you just don't you just don't you just cry a river when you see this? Everybody wants Sean Lee to get to the end zone. Don't you don't this make you cry a river? Cry me, cry me. You know what I'm saying? Look at him. Come on, my guy. Let's go to Cartel View to see exactly what Sean Lee saw. Um, Jalen Smith did this this dive looking deal that looked kind of funny to me. He should have stayed his ass on his feet, but <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, it looked like Sean just reading Jerry's eyes right here, man. He just reading eyes and. He just ended up in the right place at the right time. I, 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 then come back over the top. Yep, Sean Lee just read it perfectly. Hey, man, look. <laughs> Let Sean Lee be cerebral guy, man, because we see his brain keeps him in the fight. You know, Sean Lee's body's breaking down. It's been breaking down his whole career, but now it's breaking down as an old man. But his brain is keeping him in the fight, man. Let's just let Sean Lee play these next six games and kind of uh, control his own destiny. You know what I mean? Van Der Esch got the rest of his life to be fantastic. And this is the play where Sean Lee comes off the edge here off Robert Quinn's side. That's dope. Sean Lee's going to come off Robert Quinn's side, and he's going to run Ty Gurley over and just, you know, you know, sack Jerry Goff right here. I'm going to let this play, and I'm going to kind of just holler at y'all for a little bit, though, man. Hey, man, y'all see what this, what, this, what this team could be. Y'all seen what this team can be, man. I said on my live stream the other day, man, look at Sean Lee just <laughs> running people over. Just with that coffee in your water bottle that's what the coffee for the michael jordan secret stuff all space jam damn it but it, it, you know man th there's no doubt that this team can't play like this for six more games and that's all we need six more games six more games we got we got philly next week we got uh we got washington after that then we got whoever the hell for the next four you know what i mean and if we get this performance from the O line, this performance from the D line, because this is where this thing was won at uh we we won this thing running running the football um, so offensive line getting moving and all that Dak throwing it when, when he needs to and you know I think even if Dak had to like take over and like throw the ball a little bit we can do that I just don't want Dak to have to throw the ball while we're down by like two possessions or something like that you know um, let's 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 run the football let Dak throw when, throw when we need him to throw uh, get Tony involved absolutely and let's play defense like this man let's just keep the daggum uh, the daggum D line top tier make this thing great again man so we can I ain't going to say nothing because apparently I jinx us when I say we're going to beat the hell out of somebody. We don't. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but boy, this, uh, that was laid That was laid very, uh, very uh, thick on my mind this week. So I'm just going to shut up and just watch this play. But, uh, hey, man, everybody right now in the chat box, the comment section, hashtag six more. Hashtag six more. That's going to be our thing, man. Uh, hashtag six more. All right. Um, that'll be it for me. This week, I might try to do another live stream or something like that. Um, I'll be in Mississippi over the next handful of days or whatnot. So if I go silent, I'll be back. Just know that I'm in Mississippi over the next few days. But uh, I'm still going to try to get that workout. Uh, free smoke, free smoke. We're going to do the holiday thing, of course. Um, the holiday is going to be okay, cool. That's the 24th and 25th. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back right around that time and we'll keep this film train rolling. All right. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Wilson and Peace Whiskey, man. Don't forget the Patreon stuff and, uh, go watch my other two videos if y'all haven't. All right. Peace. 
My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to affordablesticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is multi-screen features. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Sticks, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. Because if you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.